Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I have some mini lathe work, some small lathe work that I want to do. And I'm actually going to use my mini lathe in order to do this. We're going to be turning some aluminum. I'm going to be making a piece that was plastic out of aluminum so it can look nice and so it can have some durability. Uh, inferior material to superior material, I guess, depending on its use. Anyway, I've got a drawing on the workbench here. You could call it the back of a napkin drawing if you want, because it is, in, except for it's actually on a notepad. So let me show you what we're going to be making. Uh, we'll probably have to grind a custom tool, you know, a few things. You'll see. So thanks for watching, and let me show you what we're going to make. So here is our drawing. I don't expect for you to really be able to make much out of what's going on there, but this is the part that we're going to make, not to scale. And Originally, this is the part, and it's plastic, and it's in three pieces, where it should be in one. And I've got two of these that are broken, and they broken the same way. So I'm going to be making this part out of aluminium. And it's not a complicated part, really, but it does have some features on it that will require us to uh, grind a custom tool in order to replicate. So let me get you a little closer to this part show you some of its features and we'll get started. So a little closer look at the drawing. Got a little cross-sectional action going on here. Obviously this is not to scale. You can see because if I draw this to scale and then try to put the dimensions on there I wouldn't be able to see what's going on and I don't you know I don't need it to scale. You get the idea. This will be easier for you to see as well. We've got a pocket here with a 90 degree tapered bottom and it's just perfect for a number four 90 degree center drill. So that's what we're going to do for our pocket. We will drill all the way through with a number 25 drill. We've got a couple steps here. You can see we've got a diameter here. We've got a step up here. We've got a pocket here that's actually a spring pocket for a spring that goes here. All this is held together by this one screw that goes through the, through the center right there. So let's go over to the lathe. Let's get, set, let's get that little dude set up, cleaned up, ready to rock and roll, and see if we can't make two of these. I gotta make two. I'll probably just show you me making one. You get the idea. Three quarters of an inch by five eighths. So it's colder than a you know what and you know where outside. The wind's kind of blowing. It was blowing really hard a little a little while ago and it's about zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's just cold. When the wind blows it's cold. I know there's people living in Antarctica. No. I don't think there is any permanent residence in Antarctica, but there's people that live in cold areas. I know there's colder places on the planet. You know, you love cold weather, and I'm weak. I understand that, and I accept that. Anything below freezing, I'm out. Not interested. After a while, I get used to it, but, you know, living where I do, it doesn't normally stay below freezing, so I don't get used to it. And when it is below freezing, it's cold. Here's the lathe that we're going to use. A lot of you guys may remember this thing. I've used it. I've made hundreds of parts on this thing, and I enjoy having it. It's great for little things. It's great for aluminum, brass, copper, stuff like that. Works really good on. Not so great for harder steels, but this machine is responsible for starting a lot of people on a dangerous, very dangerous path of wanting to get machine tools. It has fed the hobby for a very long time, even though they are a lot to be desired left with one of these machines, they leave a lot to be desired. They're still really good machines for the cost. I don't care if you live in a closet, you can have this thing, it's that small. So we've got a piece of one inch, this is 6061, and I'm just going to cut me off a small chunk here because this won't go up, I don't think it will, in the spindle bore of that machine. Nope. So we're going to cut us off a chunk. Enough to where we have a, enough meat to grab onto with the lathe jaws, but we don't want to waste a lot either. So we'll cut off an inch and a half. So our tool, just a left hand 
standard you know quite a bit of rake in that and a lot of clearance that way i can loosen this tool post i can twist it if i need to and a good sharp tool on a lathe like this takes a lot less effort to push that tool through the work than it does some big blunt blunted nosed tool so and we'll just go straight to the work for, well first thing i'm gonna do cant it just a little bit about like that i'm gonna come in and face it then i'm gonna turn all the way down to the face of the jaws to the major od here which is five eighths so that's going to be my first first moves my dial. Now I can just work, work from the dial down to pretty close where I want. And I'll stop a couple times and do a couple checks, but we're just going to run her down to 5 8 625. Seven hundred thousandths, so I am what seventy five thousandths away. So this should be six twenty five, six twenty six. That's good enough. So we're working this, the big end is going to be towards the chuck of the lathe. We're going to start on the small end and work our way this way. So now I'm going to work down to this shoulder here. So we need to cut down from our 5 8 diameter. We've got solid diameter in there right now. It's 5 8 So we need to cut that down to 400, or no, sorry, 330 thousandths and it needs to be 337 thousandths to the shoulder. So here's the way I set this up for this cut. So I can cut in the appropriate amount Got a dial indicator or a mag base off the ways, touched off on the end of the part, zeroed it. Now I need to feed in 337 thousandths. I just touched it, touched the tool, the outside diameter. I know it's five eighths. Zeroed my dial, and I need to feed in 295 thousandths. So that's the way I'm figuring out what's going on. That's the way I'm getting the numbers, getting the dimensions.
we're 369. So, we're 39,000 sway. So don't let a small lathe like this fool you or lull you into some false sense of security because they're small. Stringy chips like this, this thing will catch them and give you a severe face whipping. I just got one actually with this ball of chips right there. Luckily I was wearing the safety glasses. So I have changed out tooling. Right now I have small parting blade. This Dixon tool post is super nice. It's so much more convenient and user friendly than the four way tool posts that most of these lays come with. A very worthwhile upgrade to any machine is a quick change tool post, any lathe. So I have squared this tool up so the cutting edge, sharp cutting edge of this parting blade is parallel with my machine surface with the ways of the machine. So it's square. I'm making that second ledge on that, so I'm gonna come in with my leading edge of the parting blade, touch the face of the work, and now I need to feed back 400 and 428 thousandths. So one, two, three, four, 10, 25, 26, 27, 28. So now, once my cutting edge touches the work, I need to feed in 211 thousandths, and then that'll give us what we can make easily of that second step, then we will grind a custom tool on uh, probably the bench grinder to get up into that spring pocket. That'll kind of be a trick. We'll figure that out when we get there. Let's see if we can't get this second portion of the step knocked out. Call that zero. Now, reward all. We need to come in. Man, these little lays are so easy to tweak and get, you know, like while you're trying to adjust the dials and stuff. So easy to tweak and mess up your measurements. So 211 thousandths. So I'm going to call that good enough, because it is good enough. The little Cora doesn't seem to get into much on these cold days. She just, she's just a sleeper. She's just taking a dog nap. She don't like this cold weather no more than I do, do you, girl? No. She's been running up in the woods, actually, for a little bit. I seen her running down the hillside through the window just a minute ago. I don't know what she was in chasing. Is there a ground squirrel or... A deer, who knows what this girl was after. But she come back empty handed, so she didn't get it. Now she's exhausted. All right, so we need to make that spring pocket there. And obviously this is a lot bigger. It'd be really easy if it, the work was that big. But as you can see, our actual spring pocket that we need to make is only 70 thousandths of an inch wide. So here's the piece of tool we're gonna grind into a cutter. It's a piece of crucible, 
three eighths high speed steel, never been ground before. So what I'm gonna do is blue this up. I'm gonna scrub a 70 thousandths wide uh, line on there and that will be our cutting edge. It's not gonna be a very big tool when we're done. It'll be pretty short and not very tall because it has to work inside of that radius in there. I'm gonna do all this on, on the bench grinder just like probably the vast majority of folks would. You could set it up in the cutter grinder if you wanted to and all that. But you know, most people don't have a cutter grinder. So we'll, we'll do this. I'll show myself doing this on the bench grinder. It'll work. It will work. All right, so I am gonna take advantage of the relief angle that's just grounding this thing from the factory, the way that they cut them. Just opposing angles on each end. So we'll use this end. And the top of our cutting edge will be right there. Yeah, it saves you a little bit of grounding anyway. Already having a small relief in there from the from the get go. I'll let this dry. And I'll scribe in my cutting edge width. So we're over here at the surface plate, and I want my cutting edge to be on this side over here. It needs to be seventy thousandths of an inch thick. So we'll lay that on its side. Fifty, sixty. 70 and this is just a reference line that's all it is so when we're over at the grinder we can have something to grind to and there we go does that show up i think so I scrapped another line across the tool. That's the depth that I need to grind this. And you can see up in the top right hand corner there, that's what we're going to be left with. Just a little nub. We're also going to be removing quite a bit from the height, thickness, whatever you want, height, I guess you'd say, of this tool. So it can get up in that radius and not rub. So it's going to be just a little nub sticking off this thing when we're done. So and I'm going to use the uh, Dewall pedestal grinder. So I'm going to be going pretty, pretty slow with this. I don't want to bake off my blue. I'm going to be able to see the lines. So I've got a jug of water here. Just old coffee, coffee can. No, keep it cool. Keep me from cooking my fingers. Keep my lines on here. I normally do the rough work on this wheel here. This cuts a lot freer than this one. But this one is a harder wheel, or it seems to be. Keeps the sharp corners a lot better. So I'll do all my rough heavy material removal here, and then go over here to do my final shaping. Probably enough over here. I'm gonna go see if I can't just finish this up with uh, with some stones. A little relief angle on this side of it.
So I'm getting close on this tool. I need to put just a slight bit of relief on the top. I'll do that uh, with a little cutoff wheel. Also got to remove this radius that's left in this corner from that from the bench grinder stone. I want to get that cut back just a little bit and maybe shorten this tool a little more. Pretty not much tool left there right now, but it should it should work. So let's remove this corner and I want to show you how I how I fine tune tools without working all day with like a hand stone. And that is these non-reinforced cutoff wheels. I really like these things. If you're careful, you can you can do some pretty precise work with them. I wanted 70, so I'm 10 thousandths off. Not too bad, not too bad. It's, this is not a critical measurement, really. But if I can get it closer than that, I will. It sure ain't much left there, but I think that's that's what it's going to take in order to make it. So we'll go over, get set up, and see if it'll make the cut. All right, so I need to put this tool in the holder. So I relieved it a little on the edge too because this I want that side of the cutting edge to be the farthest out because it has to clear a little edge there. So I'm just going to lay this on top of this machine like that so it, the tool is flat in the holder. stick out too much. Could set this on the surface plate if you were after you know exact. This is going to be close enough for what we're doing. That way the tool, or at least that cutting edge, is all the way out to the face of the holder. Get it on center. Let 
I'm just using the little center that you can see it on the part that I'm turning there. So that's all I'm using. I know that's center. And I just want to be just ever so slightly below that. So that tool has to feed into that face 80 thousandths, and I'm hoping that'll do it without rubbing. Just want to see the slightest bit of chip come off of that second diameter there. Go. Now eighty thousandths, and I'm going to feed in with a compound. It actually done a decent job. I'll take that. Uh, I'm just going to cut this off in the saw and then work the face. This machine needs a carriage lock, something awful. There's just not enough mass here. You get any chatter, carriage wants to move, and I hold it just with, the, with my hand on the wheel, but it's just not enough. You can't get real precise by just holding it. It needs locked. So we got our center drill in here and all I'm going to do is feed this in up to a line that I drew and I use the existing part to gauge how how far I need to go in and I mean it is just a screw pocket that's all it is. So now I'm just going to break the edges on this to soften this thing up. 
massage with a file a little bit. And this part should be should be done. So now I'm going to drill through this. It's number 25 drill. It's 149, 150 thousandths. And this is just a clearance hole for the screw that runs through it. go. That part is done. So check out that dust in the snow that we got out there. Pretty typical for our area. We don't get a ton of snow. Usually one to three inches is the maximum snowfall that we'll see at one time, but we're, we can get a foot of snow. It's just rare. This is common. I can remember as a kid just begging for a snow day. Please let it snow so I can get out of school for at least one day. And it, it didn't happen often, but when it did happen, believe me, I was one happy kid. And I took advantage of those days. I played like you wouldn't believe on snow days. It was just the thought of being out of school because of snow. There was nothing else to do. Not where I grew up. I lived, grew up in a place out in the sticks like this. So you just played. You know, went and walked in the woods or whatever. It's a lot of fun. I love to see it snow, but I also love to see it go away and uh, sometimes get here. Some people love winter. I'm just not that person. I don't, wouldn't say I hate it, but I definitely wouldn't say I like it either. Pretty good looking little part. So let's play a little game here. Now that's the button that I made. What kind of button is it? I'm covering up some letter in there with my fingers, but chances are you've seen one before. If you've got any age on you at all, you know what this is. Where have you seen it before? First person that gets it right. I'm going to pin them up at the top of the comments. And if nobody gets it right, then I'll spill the beans in the comments. But you get the idea. It's a button. i got to make two of these. What's it for? So a simple little part on a pretty simple little lathe. But it did turn out really good. I'm happy with it. It was a fun little project, something I could do pretty quick. And uh, don't forget, if you've seen what that, if you know what that part is, make sure put it in the comments. I'm very interested to see how many people just from what I shown, what I showed of that part, I'll know what it is. I know some of you will, and then I know some of you have seen it before, but you just can't picture where you've seen it before. And I, you know, when that happens to me, it eats me up until I can find the answer. So if no one gets it, which somebody will, I'm certain, I'll pin a comment on top. But if I see somebody who gets it, the first one that I see who gets it, Boom, pin in your comment up top, and then you can just go down to the comments and see, you know, what the heck that little button I made was. For the rest of you who don't know, don't really care, but you really just want to know what it is. So that's it. Thank you all for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. Just to note, it is 17 degrees outside, and I've got it to 46 degrees in the shop. So, it's cold outside. Very, very nice in here. 40-something degrees is perfect for a shop. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.